This is a typical compact cassette. This, on the other hand, is a video 8 tape. At first glance, they look quite similar. Clearly, there's something more here. This one has two reels. You go from this reel over to this reel, and there's some tape on the bottom for a head to come against. This tape, well, it has a fancy cover, but beyond that, also, we have the tape to come against the head, and we have two reels. In principle, both of these are pretty similar, right? Goes from one reel over to the next. In this case, I mean, it would be, of course, it's the capstan turning it, not your finger. These tapes, however, have a fundamental difference. Anyone who's worked with digital audio or video could probably tell you that video files are much, much larger than audio files are. Yet these two tapes look almost identical to each other. Heck, the video one's even a bit smaller than the audio one. This one stores an hour of audio. This one stores an hour of video. Clearly, there's something more here. Historically, um, these audio tapes are essentially one-dimensional. They're pretty much, I mean, there are technically two tracks on it. There's a left and a right uh, stereo, and it plays in both directions. But beyond that, when this turns, the tape moves in one direction, and the head is stationary. Uh, and it reads, you know, the analog, the magnetic data off of the tape, which then gets converted to electrical signals, which then gets converted to sound. However, on a videotape, if you were to follow the same principle, you wouldn't be able to fit any video onto it. Like, when you play a plug of VHS, it looks like the same thing is happening, right? It looks like the tape, just like this one, is moving, uh, and you're reading the video signals. But that's not how it works. Instead, the, this is actually not one-dimensional, but instead we're actually using this tape surface in two dimensions. Let me explain. For another reference, here is a VHS tape. If I open this one up, by pressing the button, you'll see that this also looks like, looks a lot like this, just wider and longer. And fundamentally, both of these are pretty similar in terms of the tape characteristics. Um, but the width of this should give you a hint as to what's actually happening here compared to how thin the audio tape is. In fact, with these videotapes, the video is not written linearly like the audio tape, but rather it's written diagonally alongside tracks. Uh, let me show how this works. Maybe not the young people watching, but most people on this channel have probably seen an audio cassette player. Uh, I will have a couple pictures of my uh, compact cassette player on screen right now. And you can see that there's a simple head that just reads what's on the tape. For comparison, here is a mini DV camera. It's an old camera. Uh, it actually doesn't record to those video 8 tapes I showed. It records the mini DV tapes, but uh, those are downstairs and this is handy. So let's take a look at this. In case you can't tell, this is way more complicated than any compact cassette audio player. You're not just read, like reading the data as the tape moves by. Instead, I'm going to handhold the camera and hopefully we can get a better look at this. Here is that same camera. I'm going to now, now we can start to get a look at the internals of this. So the tape goes in. And uh, you might notice that where normally you would have a regular head on a compact cassette, we have this uh, cylindrical thing, and that's actually called the drum. So that cylindrical piece in the middle is what I want to focus on. That is the video drum. And it's a fundamentally different compared to how a regular audio cassette gets recorded and played. If you've ever heard one of the videos that were recorded on this camera, you would know there's a particular sound to it. I'm going to overlay the audio track right now.
if you couldn't tell, there's that particular whirring sound. And that whirring sound actually comes from this drum rotating at a high RPM. Not hard drive fast, but like still over a thousand RPM fast. So here's how this works. Notice how that drum is actually angled. The tape follows a straight path through this because it has to come and go from, you know, one end to the other end from the, from, from the tape back. But that drum sits at an offset and that's the key to how this works. So the straight on tape comes against this angled drum and this angled drum as it's rotating draws these diagonal paths through it. Let me demonstrate with a piece of paper. All right, pretend that this section you see here is our tape and let's say it's moving this way, right? First, uh, let's draw one parallel to it so you can see how the audio tape would work. Our tape's moving, so on this side we've got one reel, here we've got the other, the tape's feeding over here, and it's going to come and get reel there inside of our beautiful tape, although that looks more like a VHS tape now, given the spacing. For an audio tape, we have, we have the head in the center. So, as this is moving by, if I say I have uh, this waveform, right, that's recorded on here, as it's moving by, we're reading the waveform and all is well. Now, let's see what happens on the videotape. The video head, the drum, is angled. And this drum is also going to be spinning at a high RPM. So while this tape moves in this direction, if our drum is moving this way, you can see how these are going to collide, right? So the tape, the particles on here would be normally moving here, but because the drum is moving, what we're writing also changes. So due to this intersection between the two, we end up getting these diagonal lines that are recorded. The diagonal lines won't be at the same angle as this, because as this is writing, the tape's also moving, right? You need to remember that. Um, but essentially what we've done is instead of storing this single waveform here, we have stored this wave except in two dimensions. So instead of just one dimension, which is based on the length of the tape, we have one that's now the length and one that's kind of the uh, along the width. So overall, this is the principle behind the video drum. And this works the exact same way on VHS tapes. Um, if I flip the new page and I have my thick VHS tape, um, you know, as this tape moves slowly, we have the second axis. I'm not drawing any precise angles here, but this drum also moves this way. And this is how we are able to fit way more information compared to an audio tape onto a videotape. Now, of course, it's not perfect, right? VHS, you've probably noticed that um, the colors look pretty terrible and stuff. Like, there's been a lot of optimization to, to make use of the limited space. But, uh, and it still has the same limitation of, audio, like, any tape, which is that you get, you know, no random access. Um, which is probably one of the reasons why you know, people switch to any other medium, even CDs. Although they don't technically give random access, there are a lot, you can seek a lot more than you can with this without having to, you know, rewind the whole thing. But you might say, so this is the video, and actually I want to include this little portion. For an actual VHS tape, there is a thin sliver at the end, and the audio is actually written in a regular linear format, just like it would on regular audio tape. So for this massive tape I was showing, most of this is video, tape moves, drum rotates, and then the end of it is used for the two stereo audio tracks. Well, two tracks makes it stereo. And that's why a videotape is fundamentally different compared to an audio tape, and that's how we're able to fit way more information onto it given something that's roughly the same size. This actually 
this has be, this is a great um, innovation, I guess, because otherwise, uh, just think of how fast you would have had to <laughs> run the tape so that, like, you know how much hisses on a regular audio tape, just given how, like, how slow you're moving, and you had to go from the kilohertz of bandwidth over to the megahertz. And uh, I have no idea exactly what technique is used for, like, the IBM L20456 linear tape open once, but... Presumably, there are some other crazy innovations that it takes to fit, you know, multiple terabytes onto something the size of a VHS tape. Um, maybe unfortunate that they didn't get quite the same attention as like 18 terabyte hard drives and they're still lagging behind. Uh, but interesting nonetheless, and this is something that fundamentally solved the problem of fitting more data by turning one dimensional into essentially two dimensions. And if you think about it, CDs followed on that. For your CD, you have, you start recording from the center, right? And it goes outside. So a CD is kind of like, you can think of it in two ways. Unlike a hard drive, which is true two dimensions, because you have uh, cylinders, uh, which are the rings, and then you have like the individual tracks and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, for a CD, it's actually one continuous spiral, essentially. So it is like and like audio in the sense that it's a single dimension, right? It's just a continuous spiral if you look at how the data is laid out. But geometrically, it should be pretty obvious that a circle is two dimensions. At least you have the radius, which is for the laser carriage to move over. And then you have your angle and hard drives work in the same way. They start from the outside and unlike the spiral, they are actually made up of separate rings essentially of magnets, but fundamentally you end up with, in here as well, you have your radius from the middle, um, also have a spindle, of, instead of the laser moving, you have a head that's on an actuator and that'll move over, but you have the same principle, you have one dimension from the radius and then the second which is wait for the disc to come to the correct spot. Alright, so I just wanted to quickly show an LTO tape as well before I finish off this video. So as I said, on the left here we have a VHS tape, audio compact cassette, video 8 tape, DVD for size comparison, and uh, let's bring the LTO tape in. Here's a box for a quantum LTO5 tape. So these use serpentine encoding, and LTO5 is the fifth generation of the format. There's also up to, they're up to LTO9 I believe now, but there's no way I could afford one of those as a prop for a video for ST. These are pretty cheap. Uh, so here is the tape for comparison. You can see these are about a one and a half terabytes, three terabytes compressed. That's marketing bulk BS, 1.5 terabytes. LTO4 was, I believe, 800 gigs. Six is two and a half terabytes uncompressed. Seven is six terabytes, I want to say. Something like that. But anyway, the new ones are up to almost 18 terabytes. But here, I just wanted to give you a a size comparison. So you can see that it's roughly the same as a VHS tape on this axis. Overall similar. And uh, top down, it's about half of a VHS tape. And it's no coincidence. So um, yeah, in terms of height, practically the same and same in terms of the other two dimensions as well here it is compared to a CD you can see that the of course it's a lot thicker but it's similar surface area wise now let's go into Y so I previously showed the fact that VHS tape is half an inch wide and you'll notice that there are two reels in here right it goes from one reel onto the other that has something to do with this now let's take a look at this. This has a little door that opens here. I can't, I don't want to get too much dust in there, but you can see that that's where the tape is. If I hold it up to the light so you can see in it, you can see that we have a spool of tape, also half inch, same size as VHS. And uh, as you can tell from the spindle down here. This only has a single reel 
And this is why the drives are so large. It's because when you pop this in, well, it actually has to... When you pop this into the drive, it has to wind from this tape over to a second reel that's inside the drive. So these only have the one reel that's stored uh, in these cartridges. And that's fine because it makes the cartridges nice and compact. As you can see, it's a heck of a lot more data than this old thing. Particularly if I had LT09 to use as a prop, you know, then it could have gotten almost 20 terabytes. But yeah, very similar half inch tape. Of course, a very different encoding instead of being helical like this. It's uh, linear but with multiple passes. And I think part of that's because helical tape isn't very reliable because you need to have that spinning drum. Whereas with uh, LTO tape, what I should mention is that there are multiple heads. So there's four servo tracks that separate the uh, data um, tracks. So essentially, this is why you can't degauss these things, but uh, essentially the inner heads will use the servo tracks as a uh, reference point and offset themselves from the servo track. And um, I mean, the tracks on these are so narrow that they're actually uh, overlapping one another. So, you know, when it writes the one and it's looping back around, that loop back around actually, you know, overwrites part of the data from the first one. So have to be quite they're quite uh, precisely calibrated but yeah they have quite a number of um, different heads that can read and write at once and I mean you tend to think of tape as archaic but these things can easily do well over 150 megabytes a second right so at least for LTO5 um, so I mean that's quite quite impressive you couldn't get 150 megabytes a second onto or off of that thing so um, so yeah that's this is just a quick addendum and of course here it is next to there are two tapes, of course, this being 8th inch and this being quarter inch. Um, so, you know, you can see the 8th inch tape, the quarter inch tape, and then the half inch tape. Uh, it's, of course, a lot thicker and, or wider in that aspect. But anyway, yeah, this is just a quick addendum. I couldn't release a video on tape without talking about modern tape in the data center. So, uh, uh, I, hope, uh, I, I hope this helps. Anyway, that is a hopefully useful and hopefully interesting video on audio tape versus videotapes and a bit on CDs. So on and so forth. Hopefully you find this interesting. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.